What is the potential size range for black holes? Currently, there exist sizable black holes formed through the collapse of massive stars, a phenomenon that could lead to the creation of exceptionally massive black holes. Supermassive black holes, with masses ranging from millions to billions of times that of the Sun, are likely located at the cores of most, if not all, galaxies, including our own. For instance, Sagittarius A has a mass approximately equivalent to 4.5 million suns. On the smaller end of the scale, the tiniest known black hole is only five times more massive than our sun, but is 100,000 times more compact. Some black holes have a diameter comparable to that of a big metropolis. However, the weight of such a midget is comparable to 5,000 suns. Others have a radius equivalent to that of Earth, but their mass is 6 million times bigger. It just disappears against the backdrop of, for instance, the hole in the core of the Messier 60 galaxy, which has a mass of 4.7 billion suns. At roughly this mass, a class of ultramassive black holes emerges, with the biggest consisting of up to 4 to 5 billion suns. But even so, they seem to be cosmic newborns. Currently, the TON618 quasar is the biggest known black hole, with a mass 66 billion times that of the Sun.IT is situated near the galaxy's north pole in the Canes Venatiki constellation, which represents hunting dogs. The TON618 quasar is thought to feature an accretion ring of hot plasma around the enormous black hole at the galaxy's core. The quasar is believed to be 3.18 giga per second, or 10.37 billion light years distant. The emission lines in the TON618 spectrum are frequently broad, indicating that the gas in the accretion disk is flowing at a fast speed of over 7,000 kilometers per second. Due to the quasar's brilliance, the galaxy at its core is not visible from Earth. Its absolute stellar magnitude is 140 trillion times that of the Sun. This is why the exact mass cannot be calculated. What can't be stated about the new competitor, Home 15A? Homburg 15A is a type CD supergiant elliptical galaxy found in the ABLA 85 galaxy cluster in the constellation Cis, around 700 million light years from the Sun. Type CD galaxies are a subtype of massive elliptical galaxies in morphological class D. Such galaxies exhibit significant stellar HA loss and may be observed in the cores of some big galaxy clusters. They are often seen as perhaps the biggest representation, 750 km per second, which can only be explained by the existence of a supermassive black hole with a mass of at least 170 billion solar masses. This kind of scaling does not apply to the dark matter halo. However, the growth of a black hole in dark matter is not related to baryonic matter. Notably, among known objects, this one has the heaviest supermassive black holes. This famous example demonstrates that the primary component of the galactic center is a supermassive black hole. It has a radius of around 790 astronomical units and a mass of around 40 billion solar masses. Pluto, on the other hand, is about 39 light years away, five astronomical units distant. However, the findings show that Home 15A emits so much gamma radiation that some experts estimate it to be 310 billion solar masses. How is this possible? Let us attempt to figure out this cosmos. Observations revealed that the distribution of star orbits was changing more toward tangential motion inside the core. However, the displacement is smaller than that seen in other elliptical galaxies with cores. This suggests that galaxies and black holes merged in the past. Astronomers discovered that the measured magnitude of tangential anisotropy and the form of the light profile are compatible INA formation scenario in which home 15A is the result of the merger of two supergiant black holes, the masses of black holes in galaxies with cores that include Home 15A 
are proportionally scaled inversely, with the brightness of the star's central surface and the density of the mass, respectively. That is exactly why Black Hole Home 15A has emerged as one of the biggest and most hungry supermassive black holes. The updated estimate of A. Its mass ranges from 40 to 310 billion solar masses, and its rate of matter accretion is believed to be 8,000 to 45,000 times greater than that of the Milky Way's black hole. If our galaxy's black hole accumulated that much stuff, it would have to devour two-thirds of the Milky Way's stars. Additional research will divulge the mysteries of this item, but nevertheless, the Home 15, a black hole, is the heaviest of all those identified so far. Currently, it is considered that there are only three kinds of black holes, ranging from the smallest to the biggest. The primordial, or initial vision, is in front of us, or relic black holes. These are the tiniest black holes formed during the universe's early growth. Clusters of stuff that formed as a result of the Big Bang's abnormalities are believed to collapse into black holes, while the remainder of the stuff grew. A black hole does not have to be very massive or hefty. Some primordial black holes may be far smaller than a proton, according to researchers. The second viewpoint. These are stellar mass black holes. They form when huge stars complete their life cycles. Take notice that black holes are only produced from stars with masses greater than the sun's. By 20, 40 times, gas accretion is another possible way for a star mass black hole to emerge. Accretion is the gathering of stuff from the surrounding space into a celestial body. Gas falls into a neutron star until its mass surpasses the maximum mass that neutron stars may have. In such cases, the neutron star will collapse into a low-mass black hole. Finally, there's the third type, supermassive black holes. These objects are considered to be in galaxies' cores. Their mass may be as much as 10 to the 9th power of the Sun. Among them is a gigantic hole in the middle of the Milky Way, weighing 4 million solar masses. It is said to have originated from a massive gas cloud. Into dark matter, or alternatively, is part of the initial generation of heavy stars that collapsed into primordial black holes before merging to form a single supermassive black hole. There is also a notion that supermassive black holes are situated in the heart of quasars, which are the least researched and most distant cosmic phenomena visible from Earth. Quasars are galactic nuclei that include a black hole at their core. Quasars are very bright and tiny in size. They can be seen from a distance of 10 billion light years. These objects generate a significant quantity of energy over the electromagnetic spectrum, particularly in the infrared. It is exactly this kind of large black hole. However, there is currently no widely accepted hypothesis for the generation of black holes of this mass, such as the one in the core of galaxy CID 947. Galaxy CID 947 is a rather ordinary galaxy. The combined mass of its stars is just 45 billion times higher than that of our Sun. For instance, the Milky Way, a relatively modest spiral galaxy, has 64 billion solar masses. However, the mass of the supermassive black hole at its core turned out to be unusually large. According to estimations, its mass is about 7 billion times that of the Sun, making it one of the biggest black holes in the early universe and the leader in the weight category of galaxies. This finding completely contradicts well-established theories about the growth of black holes in galaxies' centers, which state that stellar megapolises and the heavyweights living in their centers grow at roughly the same rate and have the same mass ratio of 1 to 500. In the instance of CID 947, the black hole is barely eight times as bright as the whole galaxy. This indicates that it was expanding far faster than the rest of the star Megapolis, consuming almost all of the gas that dropped into CID 947 from the intergalactic environment, 
which was quite rich and dense in comparison to today. There is another strangeness. See, ID 947 has already surpassed its limit of development, yet new stars continue to form in the surrounding galaxy. This was previously thought to be impossible since the black hole's radiation and the gas flows around it should hinder the formation of new stars. It turns out to be a bizarre contradiction since a black hole both devours and encourages star formation. It is commonly understood that our cosmos has dimensions or a set of location coordinates from which it may be measured. Dimensions include length, height and breadth. In other words, they are measures that define the cosmos as we know it. Multidimensional space seems to be more concentrated in terms of information and energy capacity dot a T1 place in space. A higher dimension may represent the concentrated knowledge of all the other levels of reality in the lower dimensions. Is it conceivable to locate the most inaccessible fourth dimension? And how does interaction with it alter our world? If we think about it long enough, we may be able to uncover the answers. Simply put, if you put a cube in front of you, you will not see its backside. Because perception is two-dimensional, if the cube starts to spin, the brain will recognize it as a cube. And yes, there is a backside. But what our brain understands is one thing, and how our eyes see it is another. If we had three-dimensional vision, we would see the cube from all sides at the same time, similar to how an airport scanner works. We would see all of space in its fullness, with nothing concealed from us. That is, we must observe from the outside, as if we were watching a movie or even our own dream, and sometimes critique ourselves from the sidelines. Indeed, if we lived in a two-dimensional environment on a flat plane, we would have to use our imagination to figure out how to transfer a rectangle away from the flat plane on which we reside. Well, understanding a four-dimensional space is likewise challenging for humans. A three-dimensional space is one in which, as previously stated, the location of a point is determined by three integers. Longitude, latitude and altitude above sea level are used to represent an aircraft's location. In a four-dimensional space, an item is represented by four coordinates. A four-dimensional cube is formed by moving an ordinary cube in a direction that does not correspond to our three-dimensional space. It is difficult to describe and recognize where this path is or how to overcome our limitations. But use your imagination and engage in fantasies. So why not? This form of four-dimensional cube is sometimes referred to as a tesseract, which is the equivalent of a standard three-dimensional cube generalized to four dimensions. Consider the attributes of a hypothetical four-dimensional space. To begin, we must determine if a fourth orthogonal axis is viable in the coordinate system, and, if so, where it is situated. Indeed, we identify our familiar three-dimensional space with the coordinate system's three axes. And if we can't even envision something or mentally make its equivalent picture, does that indicate it doesn't exist? It seems so. This raises the issue of why there are only three spatial dimensions. It is obvious because the atom, along with the rest of matter, has exactly three spatial properties. Length, breadth and height. What defines these three spatial attributes? Naturally, Physical items expand in three directions, forward and backward, left and right, and up and down. Kangaroos often follow this pattern. Is it feasible to observe things in the fourth dimension? Most certainly, but it will just be a projection, a portion of what it really is. That is, for people living in a one-dimensional world, any two-dimensional entities will be viewed as component pieces of one dimension. Whatever is beyond the boundaries of this dimension will go unnoticed since the eyes have already left the image. Similarly, the occupants of a two-dimensional space, such as a flat plane, can only view the inhabitants of a three-dimensional environment via their two-dimensional imprints or projections. 
they also don't perceive anything in the third dimension. This implies that if a human ends up in this two-dimensional area, the locals of the flat plane will, in the best case scenario, recognize his footsteps, in the worst case scenario, his whole cross-section. If a fourth dimension exists, what might animals and life look like on another planet? To answer this topic, picture how our world space might alter if it became four-dimensional. It is reasonable to expect that a new side would arise, allowing mobility, and that a reformation of configuration at the atomic level would commence. After receiving an unrestricted new side, the electrons surrounding the nuclei of atoms will begin to revolve in a fourth direction. The nucleus of the atom will likewise be reorganized, and the chemical characteristics of the elements will alter, thereby splitting all kinds of 3D life. Meanwhile, once atoms are restructured in the fourth dimension, our planet Earth will be just one atom thick, but its mass will stay the same as it was in three dimensions, causing it to collapse in the fourth dimension owing to its own weight. Finally, build a four-dimensional hypersphere. The Sun, as well as the other planets and stars, will experience similar events. Gravity will begin to spread out in a new direction, causing a chaotic alteration in the orbits of all celestial bodies across the universe. After a disastrous restructure, things will eventually stabilize, and there will be a new universe. True, nothing that has lived on it up to that point will stay. How many dimensions exist beyond our perception? For the time being, it remains a mystery. In the meantime, the world is genuinely multifaceted. According to a mathematical theory, an endless number of spatial dimensions may exist. Modern physics, likewise, follows similar reasoning. However, it is difficult to count the number of these dimensions. However, by comprehending at least a few of the other dimensions, we would have a useful tool for regulating the environment around us. It is commonly understood that our universe has dimensions, or a set of location coordinates from which it may be measured. Dimensions include length, height, and breadth. In other words, they are measures that define the cosmos as we know it. Multidimensional space seems to be more concentrated in terms of information and energy capacity. At one place in space, a higher dimension may contain the concentrated knowledge of all the other levels of reality in the lower dimensions. Is it conceivable to locate the most inaccessible fourth dimension? And how does interaction with it alter our world? If we think about it long enough, we may be able to uncover the answers. Simply put, if you set a cube in front of you, you will not be able to see its backside since vision is two-dimensional. If the cube starts to spin, the brain will recognize it as a cube with a backside. But what our brain understands is one thing, and how our eyes see it is another. If we had three-dimensional vision, we would be able to view the cube from all sides at once. We would be able to view everything in space, just like an airport scanner, and nothing would be concealed from us. That is, we must observe from the outside, as if we were watching a movie or even our own dream, and sometimes critique ourselves from the sidelines. Indeed, if we lived in a two-dimensional environment on a flat plane, we would have to use our imagination to figure out how to transfer a rectangle away from the flat plane on which we reside. Well, understanding a four-dimensional space is likewise challenging for humans. A three-dimensional space is one in which, as previously stated, the location of a point is determined by three integers. Longitude, latitude, and altitude above sea level are used to represent an aircraft's location. In a four-dimensional space, an item is represented by four coordinates. A four-dimensional cube is formed by moving an ordinary cube in a direction that does not correspond to our three-dimensional space. Where are we going and how can we push ourselves beyond our limits? It's tough to express and comprehend, but use your imagination and engage in fantasies. So why not? This sort of four-dimensional cube is often referred to as a tesseract. 
the equivalent of a standard three-dimensional cube in a four-dimensional environment. Consider the attributes of a hypothetical four-dimensional space. To begin, we need to determine if a fourth orthogonal axis is viable in the coordinate system. If so, where is it located? Indeed, we identify our familiar three-dimensional space with the coordinate system's three axes. And if we can't even envision something or mentally make its equivalent picture, does that indicate it doesn't exist? It seems so. This raises the issue. Why are there three spatial dimensions, no more or less? It is obvious because the atom, along with the rest of matter, has exactly three spatial properties, length, breadth, and height. What defines these three spatial attributes? Naturally, material items may expand in three directions, forward, backward, left, right, and up down. Kangaroos often follow this pattern. Is it feasible to observe things in the fourth dimension? Most certainly, yeah. However, it will just be a projection, a portion of what it really is, a line for those who live in a one-dimensional world. Any two-dimensional entity would be viewed as component components of a single dimension. Whatever is beyond the boundaries of this dimension will go unnoticed since the eyes have already left the image. Similarly, the occupants of a two-dimensional space, such as a flat plane, can only view the inhabitants of a three-dimensional environment via their two-dimensional imprints or projections. They also don't perceive anything in the third dimension. This implies that if a human ends up in this two-dimensional area, the locals of the flat plane will, in the best-case scenario, recognize his footsteps. The worst-case scenario is cross-section. If a fourth dimension exists, what might animals and life look like on another planet? To answer this topic, picture how our world space might alter if it became four-dimensional. It is reasonable to expect that a new side would arise, allowing mobility, and that a reformation of configuration at the atomic level would commence. After receiving an unrestricted new side, the electrons surrounding atomic nuclei will begin to revolve in the fourth direction. The nucleus of the atom will likewise be reconstructed and the chemical characteristics of the elements will alter, eventually severing all kinds of 3D life. Meanwhile, after the restructuring of atoms in the fourth dimension, our planet Earth will be only one atom thick, but its mass will remain the same as it was in three dimensions, causing it to collapse in the fourth dimension under the weight of its own mass eventually forming a four-dimensional hypersphere. The Sun, as well as the other planets and stars, will experience similar events. Gravity will begin to spread out in a new direction, causing a chaotic alteration in the orbits of all celestial bodies across the universe. Following a cataclysmic restructure, everything will eventually settle, and a new universe will emerge. True, nothing that has lived on it up to that point will stay. How many dimensions exist beyond our perception? For the time being, it remains a mystery. In the meantime, the world is genuinely multifaceted. According to a mathematical theory, an endless number of spatial dimensions may exist. Modern physics, likewise, follows similar reasoning. However, it is difficult to count the number of these dimensions. However, by comprehending at least a few of the other dimensions, we would have a useful tool for regulating the environment around us. A little blue planet has been lost somewhere in the cosmos, the third star after the sun. The spiral galaxy contains billions of stars. But where exactly is the Milky Way situated in the universe? A team of scientists has gathered data on over 8,000 galaxies in the universe that surrounds us. They map the galaxy's locations and speeds and for the first time in history, we discovered that the Milky Way is part of a much wider system of galaxies, a supercluster known as Laniakea. Our galaxy is in the far regions of this cluster. The universe is a vast network of galaxies, something like a cosmic spider web. Some places are nearly vacant and resemble black cosmic gaps. In contrast, 
Some are heavily crowded with galaxies in places known as superclusters, and they are maybe the biggest structures in the cosmos that we know of. But here is the question. Think for a minute. Where are we actually headed at a speed of two? Two million kilometers per hour? The precise speed at which the Milky Way moves across space. What is tugging at us? If you have a ticket, go where the destination is indicated. You will see the name The Great Attractor. Our galaxy, like its neighbors, is drawn to a certain area of space, which is around 150 million light years distant. And here's the surprise. We have no idea what's there. However, the term for this unexplained abnormality has already been devised, which is a huge weight off our shoulders. Yes, we are discussing the Great Attractor. It is particularly fascinating since it is located in the zone of avoidance, a region of the sky near the core of our galaxy. There's so much gas and dust there that you cannot see very clearly or far in the visible light spectrum. The answer to the issue was to investigate the clusters in the zone of avoidance. To analyze the difficult to reach areas, X-ray radiation was utilized, which can readily penetrate clouds of gas and dust. Clusters of galaxies emit X-rays, making observation and research simpler. In reality, the zone of avoidance is being extensively explored. Radio waves and infrared light may easily penetrate galactic gas and dust. According to the study's results, fewer huge galaxy clusters were discovered around the suggested position of the Great Attractor than anticipated. However, a gravitational anomaly at the core of the Great Attractor, the Abel 3627 cluster, was powerful enough to rip apart the spiral galaxy ESO 137001, better known as the Jellyfish Galaxy, in the constellation Triangulum, Australis, or the Southern Triangle. Furthermore, when examining the zone of avoidance in greater depth, it was discovered that the Great Attractor is located near a massive supercluster of galaxies known as the Norma Cluster. Its mass is about 1.0 trillion times that of the Sun. It is made up of thousands of galaxies, and although the Norma Cluster is enormous and the local group's galaxies are drawn to it, they cannot completely explain the movement of the local group's galaxies since the mass of the Great Attractor is insufficient to provide such an attraction. Research was undertaken, and it was shown that the Great Attractor accounts for just 44% of the speed of the small group's travel. The remainder are related to the dark flow, in which a major portion of the local universe, including the Great Attractor itself, moves in the direction of another item. Continuing their investigation, scientists at the University of Hawaii found an even larger cluster of galaxies at a distance of more than 600 million light-years from the Milky Way, well beyond the Great Attractor. This refers to the Shapely Supercluster, which contains over 8,000 galaxies and has a mass of more than 10 million billion suns, 10 times that of the Norma Cluster in the Great Attractor area. The Shapely Supercluster is the most massive of the 220 known superclusters of galaxies in the observable universe, and after reaching the region of the Great Attractor, the Milky Way, as a part of the entire local group, will most likely continue on to the larger object, namely, the Shapely Supercluster. As usual, logical issues emerge. What will happen to Earth? What awaits humanity? In reality, no one understands what this may signify much less whether our planet is in danger. Astronomers believe it will take a few more years to understand more about this oddity. Some experts do not see it as a danger, while others believe that all galaxies and clusters will combine into bigger and larger superclusters, and that is how the universe will logically end, with the Big Crunch. This may possibly come from the expansion that occurred after the Big Bang. Overall, we may conclude that the Great Attractor is a gravitational anomaly in cosmic space. In actuality, it is a collection of several galaxies that have formed and are hidden far away. As a result, a huge mass attracts other things more strongly, including you and me. 
What do you think of the Great Attractor? And what are your aspirations for discovering anything new in this area of space, where our tiny blue planet is rapidly moving? However, since we reside inside the Milky Way, determining the geometry of our galaxy's halo is difficult. It is assumed that the halo of Andromeda in the Milky Way is remarkably similar. These two galaxies are very similar in both size and appearance. According to modeling of the galaxy's trajectory, they are both on the verge of colliding and merging to create a huge elliptical, approximately 5 billion years. However, their feeble halos have already made contact with one another. Thus, we might conclude that the merger, however minor, has already started. And there is no force that can halt this merger, but the issue is what happens to the galaxies if they are seen from the side. In a collision, giant galaxies swallow smaller ones completely, and it has no effect on their structure. When galaxies are similar in size, such as the Milky Way, Andromeda's structure collapses as a result of their collision. A handful of stars will be evicted from their galaxy. Others will be sucked away when supermassive black holes merge. At the same time, the stunning spiral structures of both galaxies will be broken. They will be replaced by a new massive elliptical galaxy. These types of mergers may cause a slight increase in star creation. The collision of galaxies produces massive hydrogen clouds, which may cause a sequence of gravitational collapses. Furthermore, such mergers might cause galaxies to age prematurely since the majority of the gas is converted into stars. After a period of rapid star production, galaxies run out of fuel. Supernovae are the explosions of the brightest and youngest stars, and all that remains are the ancient, frigid, crimson stars that last a very long time. This explains why huge elliptical galaxies formed by collisions have so many hot stars, but so few active star-forming areas. By the way, when black holes merge, orbital energy is passed to the stars, which then travel to higher orbits over millions of years. When two black holes get within a light year of each other, they begin to release gravitational waves. The gas absorbed by the united black hole may generate a blazing quasar or active nucleus at the core of the reconstructed galaxy. Finally, the merging of black holes has the potential to give certain stars a strong cosmic push, transforming them into actual castaways. They're taking their worlds with them. Who knows, maybe the cosmos will reject us. The collision of galaxies is an event of really epic proportions. These types of cataclysms will strike any of them as soon as they accidentally brush each other. I in certain situations. Galaxies just pass each other. In others, immediate consequences occur. Similar to a head-on collision of automobiles, the appearance of both items is permanently altered. What will our galaxy look like after billions of years? Time will tell, but it will be a very different and unrecognizable planet. The qualities of light and their influence on our lives continue to astound us. Light, also known as electromagnetic waves, is essential in many parts of our daily lives and is an important notion in physics. Fundamental concerns include the interaction of light with matter. Light wave propagation and energy transfer have served as the foundation for many major physics discoveries and hypotheses. But if light is a form of electromagnetic radiation that is often connected with the visible portion of the spectrum, what can be said about the idea of darkness? More exactly, the notion is present. But is the phenomenon itself present? Even if you shut off the sun, the Earth will not fall into complete darkness. In this situation, light from stars, nebulae, and even the Big Bang will brighten the sky. The Earth emits light as does everything on it, including our bodies, and it will be visible in infrared. Even if you switch off the sun, it will continue to generate light virtually indefinitely. There's enough for our age and for generations to come. However, realizing the perpetual cold would be frightening. So long as we can see, we will see. 
No optical sensor can detect complete darkness. Consider black holes, the darkest of the alleged things. According to certain ideas, they can also release a small amount of light. In physics, unlike in the domain of human connections, light always overcomes darkness. Electromagnetic waves are a collection of alternating electric and magnetic fields that travel across space with a defined frequency and wavelength. In addition to visible light, electromagnetic radiation comprises radio waves, microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet, X-rays, and gamma rays. Yes, light is crucial in physics because it interacts with matter and changes its characteristics. When light particles or photons are absorbed, atoms and molecules migrate to higher energy levels, which may result in chemical reactions, thermal radiation, changes in the state of matter and nuclear processes. Where does light really originate from? Consider how the sun emits light. Numerous chemical and thermonuclear events occur in our star, each accompanied by the emission of light quanta. When two hydrogen atoms meet, they merge to produce a single atom, deuterium, which is lighter than the atoms from which it was formed, and the excess energy is released as a photon. Deuterium, in turn, joins another hydrogen atom, helium. Three are created, and one more photon is released. When two helium atoms meet, three atoms form. Helium. Three helium atoms collide. Four, two hydrogen atoms and one more photon are created. So, from four hydrogen atoms, the sun generates one helium atom and three photons. And it is just from one chain of processes. Each photon carries a significant amount of energy and travels within the sun for tens of thousands or millions of years, hitting atoms. Heating the sun and converting it into thousands of photons with less energy and frequency visible to the eye, sooner or later, these photons fly out of the sun and embark on a long and sorrowful trip across space. Some of them arrive on Earth, giving us light and warmth. So, what are the physical properties of light? First, there is speed, one of the most significant basic constants in physics. In a vacuum, it equals roughly 300,000 kilometers per second. How about the speed of darkness? How quickly will the ominous darkness fall over us? The simplest explanation is that the speed of darkness is equal to the speed of light. Turn off the sun and the sky will be black in eight minutes. The speed of propagation, which was formerly known as the speed of light, is not necessarily the determining factor. The shadow that falls over the landscape is cast by objects, and the shape of those items, as well as their distance from them, dictate how quickly it falls. ASA an example. A spinning lighthouse searchlight illuminates the area at regular intervals. However, as one moves away from the lighthouse, the pace at which the surroundings dull increases. If you go far enough away from the lighthouse, the shadow will catch up with you quicker than light travels. Isn't that correct? For example, neutron stars in space exhibit the same behavior. In other words, the speed of light will only result in a delay. Even if the beacon is pointing straight at you, you will see the light. Not instantly, but with a wait. However, this will have no influence on the sequence of events that you will see Dochuri in your place. In any event, you've been discovered and have nowhere to go. Furthermore, light has an intrinsic wavelength. The visible light spectrum is the portion of the electromagnetic spectrum visible to the human eye. The cone-shaped cells in our eyes function as receivers tuned to wavelengths in this small region of the spectrum. Other sections of the spectrum have wavelengths that are too big, too tiny, or too energetic for humans to detect. When things get hotter, they produce energy, which is dominated by shorter wavelengths and changes color in front of our eyes. A blowtorch's flame changes color from reddish to blue when the temperature is increased, dot I in the same manner, the hue of stars indicates their warmth. Because of its 5-0 degree surface temperature, 
Our sun produces more yellow light than any other. 500 and Dicke. If the sun's surface were cooler, say 3,000 decades, it would appear reddish, similar to the star Betelgeuse. If the sun were hotter, approximately 12,000 degrees, it would appear blue, similar to the star Rigel. Light interacts with matter in three main ways, reflection, refraction, and absorption. Let's look at each of them in more detail. Reflection is the process by which light reflected from things contacts the flat surface of a mirror and is reflected back, creating a picture of the item. That is, the angle of incident light equals the angle of reflection. Furthermore, refraction of light is the phenomenon in which light rays change direction while moving from one medium to another. Because of the differences in densities, things in water look displaced or deformed when compared to their location in the air. This is why faces in the sea are so unsettling. Finally, absorption is the process by which light that strikes the surface of an object is turned into another kind of energy, such as heat. This results from the interaction of light waves with material particles. For example, when an item is irradiated with blue light, it may absorb all of the blue waves while reflecting red and green waves. A SA consequence, the item will seem green, red will seem greenish. Red. This explains why items have certain hues. They absorb certain light waves while reflecting others. This is not the work of sorcerers. So, the combination of these three processes impacts how we perceive light and things in our surroundings. Reflection and refraction create the pictures we perceive, while absorption controls their hue and brightness. Darkness, in contrast to light, is a relative condition rather than a physical category. It is not even that. It is a subjective assessment of the condition. Photons may or may not reflect. Retinal cells may activate memory processes, but they cannot explain the sensory sensation of darkness. Just as waves cannot be represented by anything other than our perception of color or sound, our subjective experiences vary with time, yet the individual components of those experiences exist outside of time. And in this sense, darkness has no speed. What exactly is speed, and does it even exist? It assumes in advance the existence of a place in which it may be measured. However, in the domain of quantum physics, where common conceptions of conventional physics are often rendered worthless, it is considered that space itself is a derivative of a more basic level of reality in which there are no such concepts as location. Neither distance nor speed are relevant. In conclusion, let us attempt to draw some conclusions and illustrate how significant and interconnected all of the qualities of light are. We already understand the fundamental features of light. It is a kind of electromagnetic radiation made up of photons that may travel at a constant speed across a vacuum dot a T. The same time, light is often characterized as having dual characteristics, resembling both waves and particles. This odd trait is not only stunning and shocking, but it also holds the key to understanding basic phenomena in quantum physics. In addition, light may exhibit interference, diffraction, and polarization. Light is also very important, not just on our planet, but across the whole cosmos. Light is a genuine magical phenomenon due to its power to carry information from the great reaches of space, establish circumstances for life on Earth, and act as a tool for studying and comprehending the world around us. Light provided us with the capacity to see and sense our environment. It enables us to appreciate the beauty of nature, identify colors and forms, and improve social connection and communication. Thus, whatever light is by nature, it is one of the most incredible phenomena ever found by humans.